Good morning, beautiful fish lovers, and welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Today is a insane video. What I'm gonna be doing is using a laser to get rid of some common tank pests. But before we get zapping, I have a couple of awesome things I wanna talk about. First is your comments on my LED T5 hybrid light from my video last week. So let's talk about some of the questions you had on my last video. This was where I installed the Aquatic Life T5 LED hybrid. I filled it up with a Kessel AP700 and a couple Kessel A360s, mostly because what I was it's what I had lying around. If I could, I would uh, probably go with all one or the other probably with the Kessel A360s. So a couple of your questions. Um, I had one person, Dan Fleming, talking about they have a metal halide 400 watt on his three foot aquarium at the moment with an LED bar. He might consider a T5 instead, any advice? Well, um, you know, my advice is go with, you know, what is uh, giving you success for your tank. If the metal halide is doing great, there's no reason to switch it up. But if you do like to mess with your lights a lot, you maybe want to try LEDs, try T5s at the same time, I definitely would recommend this fixture. It's really customizable. And you know, if you got tired of one type of uh, light in it, you could definitely swap out either the bulbs or the T5s without having to reinvest in a new, very expensive fixture. So here's a quick look at the Red Sea Reefer and boy, is this tank looking gorgeous. The water is pretty clear and the lights are just providing that beautiful nutrition. Look at this pectina coral. This thing is massive. I bought this as a one inch frag about two and a half years ago. I fragged and sold it off pieces of it like three times so it's well paid for itself but it is just massive now so I think I might have to start fragging that guy again. Also, I have released the dotty back into the main tank and that dotty back is doing pretty good. It was getting a little bit bullied by the Malinaris wrasse, which I am returning to the pet store. So I contacted my local pet store, said this, this fish is just bullying all my other fish. He attacked some of my smaller cardinals. Uh, one cardinal I had to move to the smaller tank for refuge, but I got the Melanaris wrasse or Hoven's wrasse, and I'm going to return him to the pet store. Some pet stores will do this. Often you might not get any money. Sometimes you get store credit, but it's much better that you have a you know a more a tank that's in more harmony. So if you need to rehome a fish, there's uh, things like wrasses and tangs and stuff, people are often happy to rehome. Just don't expect to get much money for it. What's important is that you get the fish a good, happy, healthy place to live where he's not hurting other fish. And so that's what I'm going to do. If you do do something like that, just call the fish store ahead of time. Give them a heads up. Make sure that it's okay that you're bringing in the fish so you don't cause it undue stress. My gold torch coral loves the new lights. It's doing really well. This um, strawberry shortcake acropora colony the color has gotten a lot lighter. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but the color on it's a lot lighter now. I'm getting a decent amount of growth out of this Tinius. Um, he was on the brink, but now he's got all these new shoots at top. And of course the sand dollar is doing really good, really liking the light. The uh, forest fire Digi is lightened up a little bit, it's a little lighter in color, uh, but it looks a lot better than before. And like I said, this Pectina is out of control. This Duncan colony uh, got blown over, so I'll have to upright that. I've also been chucking little rocks in the bottom of the tank. What I think I'm gonna do is build little islands. And I have an island here, and I think I'm gonna use these to fill them with zoas. I really don't want zoas on my main rocks. Uh, just in case I change my mind about them, want to get rid of them. There's something that I want to make sure I can get out of the tank safely um, and easily as they are, are toxic. I might also use some islands for uh, maybe hosting some mushrooms, but the problem with mushrooms is they tend to detach, blow around, and they uh, connect to your rock in other places. And I really don't want that because they are aggressive towards SPS. Next, 
I'm gonna talk about this new anemone I got. Yes, I have an anemone addiction. I bought one and I got it recently uh, from my local fish store. This was in an anemone only tank, so I'm less worried about parasites from fish being in there. It won't need to go through my normal quarantine procedure when all inverts go into this tank first for a period of time. Then I have a period of time where this tank is fallow with no fish. As you see, that's a problem now because there's fish, so I really have no way to get inverts into my tank. Anyway, this tank did not have any inverts in it. It had an anen or any fish in it, had an anemone. And so we're gonna put that in there and see how my clownfish like it. So here is the anemone. Uh, and he's acclimated sitting in here. And once again, this was an anemone that was without fish, inverts only tank. Um, so I'm less worried about it bringing in um, fish diseases. It was completely separate from other systems. So this one I'm going to acclimate. I'm still gonna do a dip in this own tank water, um, not with any chemicals or anything, just a dip to make sure I rinse off all of the store water completely. And I'm gonna set them down in the middle of this big this big thing. If he behaves on here, uh, then I can have SPS around the outside, me a big anemone on the inside that the clownfish can live in. If he doesn't behave, it becomes an anemone rock, and then the SPS uh, covers everything else in the tank. So I'm drip acclimating the anemone. The water in there is from the store. I have a little bit more store water. I'm going to just top it off to cover the anemone. That airline tubing I'm using with a little knot in it to start a little siphon from my main tank to slowly drip water in there. I did this about over a process of an hour where I basically double the volume of the water, dump that out, double it again, dump that out, and then I have a separate cup with uh, water directly from my tank, which I dunk the anemone in, just to rinse off as much of the tank water from the store as I can before I place them in. So the anemone's in and the clownfish are going to be super aggressive, but hopefully they don't bother it too much. In a matter of time, we'll get that other clownfish uh, into the tank. So I know you heard the term laser and you got pretty excited. Now I've seen some videos about this method before, but really the idea is can I use a laser to get rid of uh, Aptasia and other sorts of pests in my tank? So what did I pick up to accomplish the task? Well, I grabbed myself a Wicked Laser Spider 3 laser. This is a 3,000 milliwatt laser, so it's extremely powerful, a lot of energy, and it is a class 4 laser. It shoots at 445 nanometers. Now you have to be extremely careful with these types of lasers. This is enough energy to blind you. And another thing with blue light, your light, your eyes are a lot less sensitive. So in blue light, when you're shooting this thing around, um, it's going to be way more powerful than it looks. So as with all laser products and anything you do, you need to wear safety devices. I'm going to be wearing these goggles. I've also made sure that there's no other person in the house. If I had other people with me, they would definitely be wearing safety goggles. Now, I do not recommend doing anything that I am showing you um, at home. Even with safety glasses, it can be dangerous. You've got to be very careful because we're shooting a laser into glass. And even though a lot of the laser is going to transmit through into the tank and hopefully eliminate our target anemone, there's a possibility that some of this light could reflect back. Now I did a little bit of homework um, in order to get this. They have restricted the import of these devices uh, into the United States. So they're fine to have here, but they're very difficult to get um, because they can't import them anymore. Um, so you can find them still online at Craigslist and other places, and that's where I picked this one up. Now, one important thing to know, I, I've played with this a lot. I have the 100% pass-through um, laser filter on here. It comes with a lot of really cool lasers where you can shine different patterns. I won't screw it all the way off, but it basically has a threaded end where you can um, swap out the laser types. But this 100% laser wasn't quite focused enough to get the effect I wanted. The laser beam was still, it seemed like a millimeter thick at the point, and I really wanted to focus to a specific location to get as much energy as possible on the target um, pest critter. And so what I went picked up is from Thor Labs. They make a bunch of laser type supplies 
and I picked up this little focusing laser that has a one inch uh, basically focus distance. And this one, the threading is actually um, not quite right to fit into the device, but I can add this one inch focus laser after the 100% um, lens here, and then it focuses about an inch uh, or a little bit more in front of the laser. And that's gonna be really good for this particular target. Now there's different ways I can adjust this to get a laser that focuses farther out. And I think because of this particular setup, it actually gives me a little bit more room uh, than focusing at one inch. But I've got the safety goggles on, the whole room is clear. Let's get started and see if we can zap some anemones. So the target for today's experiment is that Aptasia anemone in the center of the screen at the base of that frag plug. Now this is the only Aptasia anemone I've ever had the opportunity to test on because it's the only one I have ever seen. This one came to me on a frag that I got from the frag farmers market. So just be aware when you are buying frags from these large frag swaps, the probability that you get a pest is extremely, extremely likely. Fortunately, this tank is a quarantine tank for all my coral. Nothing makes it into the other tank without spending a good month or so in here and giving me plenty of time to inspect and catch issues like this. Wow, so I do not see any an enemy in there. That thing just got cooked to kingdom come. Let me turn on the lights. And I see nothing, no remains. I think I might have accidentally hit a couple Zoa polyps um, around there, but in general, I was at the base, so they should be fine. We'll see if they come back out. I have one last thing I wanna try. I've got a piece of bubble algae and Popping bubble algae is pretty much the worst thing you can do if you don't want it to spread in your tank. Uh, what you want to do is remove the bubbles individually. Emerald crabs are a great form of control, um, but what I found is once I got rid of my emerald crabs, the bubble algae uh, did come back. But I still like emerald crabs for control because they can mow down most of it if you have a good population and at least a couple of them take a liking to it. If you just get one, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, but you can keep the population down such that you can inspect individual frags and make sure that none that you move to another tank have it. Now, zapping bubble algae with a laser is a terrible idea. If it explodes, it'll probably send bubble algae spores throughout the rest of the tank. But this is a quarantine tank. I don't plan on moving the corals for a while until everything's cleared. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Wow, I did not believe the results. What I thought was gonna happen was that laser was gonna hit that goo-filled ball and it was just gonna explode. But there's something about bubble algae. It's just impervious to all sorts of means of removal, including lasers. Aptasia really didn't even stand a chance. There was no way it could reflect the light. It just absorbed it 
the tissue boiled and exploded, but this bubble algae, there's something about it. It must be a secret weapon from an alien planet designed to be the bane of all reefers' existence. But at least we don't have to worry about Aptasia anymore. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Today, we used a laser to obliterate Aptasia. We also learned that bubble algae is probably one of the strongest pests known to man, even impervious to a 3000 milliwatt laser. We talked a lot about safety and how you probably shouldn't try this at home. I unboxed this cool acclimation box, which I'm gonna use to help introduce my lightning maroon clowns to each other. I answered some of your feedback on this light and that is about it. So if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, leave a comment, ask me a question, check out my website, pdreef.com. We're selling t-shirts and merch to support the channel, and I hope you will tune in next week for another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. <laughs>